Welcome to the Treasured Wellness Podcast, where we talk about all things health and where nothing is off limits. You will uncover what may be holding you back so that you can break those chains, get to the root cause, and walk into freedom with confidence, the way God intended for you to live. Hi, I'm Michelle McCoy, functional health coach and holistic lifestyle advocate. Ladies, together we are going to dig deep into real life so that you are educated and equipped to create the whole health you desire without the overwhelm. Now more than ever, it's the time for breakthrough, action, and restoration. It's time to get intentional and reclaim your health. If you're ready for mind, body, and soul clarity, then let's get to it. Hey, hey, happy Tuesday. I hope you are doing well today. In today's episode, I am going to be talking about are the thoughts you think really temptations and what can you do about it? So this is going to be a little bit of some mindset support with a lot of biblical references. And if you want to dig in more to some mindset, you can go to episode five and episodes 59 where I talk about mindset and just our thoughts and how they affect us. But before we get started in today's show, if you need to grab an unstuck session so we can dig into what your biggest challenges are right now and get some clarity on your next steps, there will be a link in the show notes. Or if you want to do that complete food and lifestyle review just to see where you may need to make some changes, that link will also be in the show notes. And we can just dive in and figure out what you might be missing, where maybe where you're missing the mark on something that's really troubling you still in your health. You've been making some changes. You have been listening to the podcast. You've been making these subtle or even big changes and you are feeling better, but just something isn't right. Just something's not right. So this is a great opportunity for you to grab an unstuck session or to do that food and lifestyle review. But you know what? If coaching isn't right for you right now, don't worry. Just be sure to subscribe to this podcast so that you can listen every week. And if you would, just take a few minutes and leave me a five-star review. Okay, awesome. Today, it's going to be maybe a little bit like a Bible study. So grab your Bible, grab a pen and a journal along with your ice, whatever you're drinking today. I've got my kombucha and my lemon water here. So Let's go ahead, grab your things, and let's get started. Okay, so are the thoughts you think really temptations? And if so, what can you do about it? If you are like me, you have spent most of your life battling the thoughts in your mind, right? The thoughts that tell you so many things that frankly just aren't true. But over time, you begin to believe them. And so then maybe you start to take action on those thoughts. Well, I just got so tired of letting my thoughts control me. I just got so tired of allowing the lies of the enemy to come into my mind and tell me things that God simply did not say and does not say. So I really wanted to approach this from a spiritual perspective because our mind is part of our soul. So we know that we are living in a spiritual battle. The Bible makes this crystal clear in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Let me just read it as a reminder because I'm sure you know what what this verse is. It says, Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. And then it goes on to say, stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. 
Okay, so we remember that, putting on the armor of God, and we really should be doing that daily. And getting in God's word certainly helps us to put on that armor. But it's very clear that we are living in a spiritual battle. We have spiritual warfare all around us. So this battle being talked about in Ephesians is not just for biblical times, and it hasn't gone away. I mean, it's it's very clear that the devil is still around, still prowling around. As a matter of fact, 1 Peter 5.8 makes it clear that he's still around. It says, be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. All Christians all over the world are being watched by the devil. It's a spiritual battle. He wants your soul. He wants you He wants you to essentially be on his team and get off team God and get on team Satan. So God makes it very clear all throughout scripture that we have to armor up. We have to stand strong and we have to be aware of the fact that Satan is still around. He is trying to defeat us. John 10 10 says, a thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. That's Jesus talking. Totally opposite of what Satan wants. So I wanted to share a few people in the Bible that have been tempted in a way by Satan. I mean, Jesus himself was tempted. We know this. But I want to go right to the beginning in Genesis. Right in the beginning with the birth of Cain and Abel. You can read chapter 4, verses 1 through 16 to get some good context. But basically, Cain and Abel grew up. Abel was a shepherd and Cain was essentially a farmer. And so one day, they both presented an offering to the Lord. And essentially, the Lord accepted Abel's and did not accept Cain's. And that made Cain, the Bible says, furious and he looked despondent. Okay, so right there we've got Cain is the first man in the Bible to be angry. And he's the first man in the Bible to be depressed. Because essentially, despondent, depressed, very similar. So it's very interesting because in verse 6, the Lord said to Cain, Why are you furious? And why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. That's really a key right there for us to understand that with the serpent that spoke to Eve and convinced Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit, disobedience happened right away. And because of that, sin was right there. So God is telling Cain, sin is crouching at the door. And you must rule over it. So it began in the garden and now it's present with Cain. Only Cain can control the actions that he takes next. And as we know the story, he ends up murdering Abel. So he let that despondency, he let that anger kind of control him. He let his emotions control him. But because Satan was present in the garden and sin had already been established from his parents, we've got that temptation. So God doesn't tempt us, Satan tempts us. And if you continue reading through verse 16, even though he sinned and murdered his brother Abel, the Lord protected him. He placed a mark on Cain so that whoever found him would not kill him. And then it goes on to say that Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So he kind of went on with his life, and yet God still protected him. That's just kind of a side note to explain or to showcase the simple, amazing vastness of God's love and grace and mercy, really, over his people, over his children. Okay, and then let's talk about Judas. In John 13, 26 through 27, Jesus replied, He's the one I give the piece of bread to after I have dipped it. When he had dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son. 
After Judas ate the piece of bread, Satan entered him. So Jesus told him, what you're doing, do quickly. So it says right there, clear as day, Satan entered him. So Satan essentially accessed his spirit. So even though he was a follower of Christ, he was tempted and he gave in to that temptation because Satan tempts, God does not. And then the last person that I want to kind of showcase, so to speak, is in Luke twenty two thirty one, 31, and that's talking about Peter. We all know that Peter denies Jesus at the end, and he denies him three times, and then feels absolutely horrible about it. But the fact is, he does it. And in Luke twenty two thirty one 31 through 34, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, look out. Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and you, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Lord, he told him, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, he said, the rooster will not crow today until you deny three times that you know me. And as we know, that is exactly what happened. So there's two things there in verse 31 that have really jumped out at me. First, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Satan wanted to affect Peter. But then the second thing that stands out is when you have turned back, Jesus says, strengthen your brothers. So Jesus knew that he would fall and he knew that he would deny him, but he knew that he would be strengthened. He knew that he would turn back. And really at the end of the day, we're human. The characters in the Bible, they were real people. They were human. They fell. They made mistakes. They made multiple mistakes. I mean, look at David. My goodness. I mean, so many people have made mistakes. I don't mean to just pick on David, but so many people in the Bible have made very, very serious mistakes that had devastating consequences. But all of these people that I mentioned just now, Cain and Judas and Peter, They followed through on their temptations. So then it became sin. If we are just tempted, that in and of itself is not sin. Temptation is not sin. Let me say that again. Temptation is not sin. There's actually several steps to sin. And I may go over that at at a later date. But just simply being tempted is not sin. We have to take the action steps to sin. So here's the thing about our thoughts. You can have one of three voices in your head. You can have yours, you can have God's, or you can have the enemy's. And here's a good way to kind of see which is which. If what you were thinking is negative, it's not going to be from God. So are you buying into the thoughts that Satan is putting in your mind? Maybe hook, line, and sinker? Are you buying into that? Are you believing it? Are you accepting it as fact? Are you accepting it as truth? Because... When those thoughts come to your mind, just take a few seconds and think about it. Would God say these things to you? And really, would you say some of these things to your own child? So you can kind of lay it out like that and stand on what you know is true, what you know is right, what God's word says. And the thing is, is that Satan wants to keep us in bondage. He wants to keep us sad, sick, and stuck. He wants us to be depressed. He wants us to be down and out. And the voice of the enemy is loud, right? It's forceful. I mean, it is so clear in our mind. Whereas the voice of God is small and it's sweet and it's kind and it's loving. So what can you do about it? What can you do if the thoughts you were thinking are really temptations? You know, once once you realize that the thoughts you were thinking are really temptations, what can you do about it? Well, there are three things that I believe that you can do that will help you to get victory over this. And number one is turn to the word. Let God speak his truth over you. Jeremiah 31, 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued to extend faithful love to you. And that is unconditional love. He has unconditional love for you. And further in Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things you do not know. Turn to the word. Let him speak his truth over you and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what he wants you to see. Look up 
2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 2 Corinthians 10, 5. So that's 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and also 10, 5. And then I want to read Romans 8, 5 and 6. It says, For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the things of the Spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Just remember that God wants you to have life and have it abundantly. So turn to the word, let his truth speak over you. And then number two, talk to your heavenly father. Talk to him, pour it all out. Just like Adam walked with him in the garden and talked with him, that's what God wants. He wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to us every day throughout the day. He wants to have that time with us every day for us to pour out our hearts, good, bad, ugly, lay it all out. Just talk, have that conversation, have that relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that will strengthen us. It will strengthen us to better hear the voice of God and drown out the loud voice of the enemy. And then number three, think about these truths. Philippians 4, 8, it's what I call the verse of the whatevers. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. And verse 9, do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Okay, sometimes we only get to the first part, whatever is true. Sometimes we are in such a pit that we can only get to that first whatever and just focus on that. I've been there many times. Whatever is true and I have to go down my checklist of what is true. But that encourages us because we know that God's word is truth. We know that it's truth. So we need to focus on that. And then when we focus on that, what we have learned and received from the word will bring us peace. It says that right in verse 9. So those are the three things that you can do about these tempting thoughts in your mind. One, turn to the word. Two, talk to your heavenly father. And three, think about these truths. Okay, let me pray. Lord, we are in such a battle every day, but you tell us in your word in Exodus 14, 14, that you will fight for us. And sometimes that means that we fight alongside of you. And sometimes that means that we are still. So help us to daily renew our mind and seek you as our source of truth, as our source of knowledge, and as our source of peace. Encourage us today, Lord, that We are yours and no one can snatch us out of your hand. Thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus, who died for us to have that security if we have accepted him and his free gift of salvation. What a beautiful sacrifice that we can never repay. But Lord, that was never your intention anyway. So just lead us and guide us along the way everlasting. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to have our eyes and our ears open to see you more and hear you more. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friend, I hope today's episode blessed you and encouraged you in some way. And if it did, would you please just take a few seconds to share it with somebody else and also leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. This helps me to know that you are finding value in the show and it does bless me so, so much to read each one. So thank you so much. Also, if you are not part of my free Facebook community, Holistic Health for Christian Women, the link will be in the show notes and I would love to see you there. Okay, keep showing up consistently for yourself and for God and allow him to work in you and through you. And remember, you are a beautiful treasure. See you next week.